open your Bibles to 1 Judaizer chapter 1 verse 1. I repeat, open your Bibles to 1 Judaizer chapter 1 verse 1. I bet you there's some right now that are trying to find that in their Bibles. I'm being facetious to make a point. If there was such a epistle or book or verse in the Bible under first Judaizer it would say something like then Jesus said to his disciples if you want to be my disciple you must circumcise yourself and follow me I'm not trying to be funny because this is a very serious message that I'm trying to, trying to preach, trying to communicate to Judaizers and non-Judaizers alike. There is no first Judaizer. But if there was, and if that's the verse, very first verse in that book, it certainly would be at its center. Whoever wants to be my disciple must circumcise themselves and follow me. That would be front and center. Judaizers were the circumcision party. In fact, that's what we'll call this message. The circumcision party. A group of Jews who would go after the apostles, mainly Paul, as far as we know, what we have a record of, after Paul would reach the Gentiles with the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ, to teach faith only in Jesus Christ for salvation is not all you need. You also have to conform to the Jewish customs. Those were the Judaizers. In other words, they had to become Jews before they would ever have to, ever could become Christians. The Jewish rite of passage was circumcision. It was like that for almost 1500 years. Now, if I was a Gentile male, hearing about the free gift of grace and what Jesus did for me so I can receive it, and then here come some Judaizers after hearing that message trying to convince me usually by guilt that there was something additional that I had to do because I was a Gentile and would include some slicing and dicing of a very sensitive area. Usually circumcision in the Jewish communities, according to their customs, was on the eighth day. 
Imagine being a, say, a 70-year-old Gentile male. Finally hearing a liberating message that makes you a free man in Christ. But to be that completely, you'd have to do some snipping and cutting. On areas you don't want anybody to mess with. Go to First Titus. Well, not First Titus. Go to the Titus chapter one. This is a letter to Titus that Paul wrote. And he's explaining the qualities that church elders need to possess. Self-control, humble, discipline. They need to know, know the Word of God so they can be fully skilled in refuting false doctrine. Why Paul made the point or emphasized on what was needed? Because the Judaizers, the circumcision party, this is probably the first group that sprung up among Christians to add works so they can have a complete salvation. And Paul goes on to write Titus and says, For there are many unruly and vain talkers. Vain talkers is just senseless, empty talkers and deceivers, especially they of the circumcision, the Judaizers. He's referring to the circumcision party. For there are many unruly, senseless, empty talkers and deceivers, especially they of the circumcision, whose mouths must be stopped. This is Paul writing to Titus. This is Paul writing to Titus, giving him instruction that Paul already put in practice, and now he's encouraging others to be strong and fully skilled in the word so they could refute the false doctrine that was going around from the, six, the circumcision party. Who mouths must be stopped. But Paul is saying in today's language we have to shut them up. Well, that's not very Christian-like, you might say. Well, complain to Paul when you get to heaven. Because that's what exactly he's saying. We have to shut them up. If you haven't noticed, I've been like this all along, but if you haven't noticed, I'm getting less tolerant to all the senseless, empty deceivers out there that want to bring in works as part of salvation. Whose mouths must be stopped. 
Well, I'm taking that personal. I'm taking Paul's instruction very personal. My instruction is to stop the mouths of these senseless, empty deceivers. And how am I going to do that? Preach the rightly divided word. Not what they're preaching. Because it isn't the rightly divided word. Who subvert whole houses, teaching things which they ought not for filthy lucre's sake. This witness is true, verse 13. Wherefore, rebuke them kindly. It doesn't say that, does it? Sharply. Shut their mouths and rebuke them sharply. Is what I get out of this. That they may be sound in the faith. Now, Paul is also referring to the ones that are listening to it. If you're a listener, if you're sitting in a church, and I'm not going to go easy on you. I'm not out to make friends. My calling is to open the word so we, so we can spiritually grow in Christ. Without all the man-made traditions that has been attached to making the perfect Christian. There's no such thing. We are perfected by Christ in God's eyes because what Christ did. And we're a work in progress. But some of you sit in these churches knowing very well they preach a twisted salvation message whose mouths should be shut who should rebuke who should be rebuked sharply I'm not saying by you but one way you could do that is walk out of those doors and never come back again well I like some of the people there or I like the programs well that's all fine and dandy but you're a man pleaser including pleasing yourself instead of doing what's pleasing unto the Lord. You think the Lord's going to want you to sit there listening to a perverted gospel? As I said many times over the years, you don't get the salvation message right, you got problems. And if you're a supporter of somebody that's actually not preaching it correctly, you think you're not going to be accountable? What have I not been saying? Better yet, what God's Word not been saying to you? And the ones that are listening to it, and there's some, I guarantee you, listening to me right now, that, in, that sit in churches like this. You are to be rebuked sharply. For what reason? So you could come back to a soundness in the faith. Because it reads, for, Wherefore rebuke them sharply that they may be sound in the faith. Because if you're not applying what God's word says, that you, what you should be doing, let me tell you right now, friend, you're not sound in the faith. Use it because flesh is hindering that because you like whatever you like at this church. And you don't want to break away from it because you want to be part of it. You want that association. What's more important, your association with Jesus or your association with people with, that are all falling in the ditch? and are unwilling to listen to anything else. 
because so, so they're so determined that their pastor, the ones that preach either a little bit of works or a lot of works, has to be included so you to receive and keep your salvation. Paul goes on to say in verse 14, Not giving heed to the Jewish fables and commandments of man that turn from the truth. These Judaizers, the circumcision party, were distorting the gospel. They were perverting it. And Paul was, let's just call it spiritually anger over the situation. He was very frustrated with these pack of wolves. He even goes on to say that they should castrate themselves. Well, where do you find that? Go to Galatians. Go castrate yourself. <laughs> Chapter 5. Verse 12. Let's just read the verse. I'm not going to read everything around it. I would they were even cut off which tr trouble you. I would they were even cut off which trouble you. Of course, he's preaching about circumcision in this chapter. He's basically saying, go castrate yourself. Let me tell you, this circumcision party made it their mission to follow around the apostles, especially Apostle Paul. to pervert his message and convince people what additionally they had to do to receive salvation. And it was a widespread problem. If you look at Paul's letters, he wrote to the Galatians, he wrote to Titus, it's in Acts, it's in 1 Timothy, different areas of the then known world where they circulated around. Paul refutes them over and over in these letters trying to warn believers about their perversion. You go to Galatians, again, even Peter was intimidated by this group of Judaizers. Galatians chapter 2 verse 11, but when Peter was come to Antioch I would stood him to the face. There's Paul again not being very lovingly to his brethren because he was to be blamed for before that certain came from James he did eat with the Gentiles but when they were come, he withdrew and separated himself, fearing them which were of the circumcision. He was fearful of the circumcision party. He should have told them to go castrate themselves. Which they already did, but it probably wouldn't be fun to do it anyway. And the other Jews dissembled likewise with them, insomuch that Barmas also was carried away with their dissimulation. <clears throat> but when I saw that they walked not uprightly according to the truth of the gospel, I said unto Peter before them all, he said in front of everyone, even in taken behind closed doors, if thou being a Jew, livest after the manner of Gentiles, and not as do the Jews, why compellest thou the Gentiles to live as do the Jews? Well, I don't like your style, the way you present the gospel message. Then go somewhere else. Go back to the Judaizers. Salvation is to be taken very serious. It's not to be played with. It's not to be changed. It's not to be twisted. 
It's not something you add to. I repeat, it's Jesus only and what he did that gives us the opportunity to be right with God. The circumcision party was always trying to add something to what Jesus accomplished for us. You know how easy it is to spot these false doctrines, these heresies? Let's make it into an equation. Write this down so you never forget it. So if you come across one of these people, you know exactly where they're coming from. Write this down. Jesus, write the word Jesus, plus sign, Jesus plus anything equals false gospel. According to the Judaizers, according to the circumcision party, in their case, it was Jesus plus circumcision. So if you want to include everything into an equation, Jesus plus anything else equals false gospel, false doctrine, perverted gospel, however you want to call it. That's how you spot it. This problem got so big that it finally had to go back to the church council. You read in the book of Acts 15, I preached a message on this. Where Paul, Barnabas, Peter, James, and besides what most people think, James actually took Paul's side on this. And he said, don't trouble the Gentiles with the Jesus plus anything gospel. That's the first time this church heresy was dealt with. Unfortunately, it didn't stop there. And it still goes on today. And the sad thing about all this, friends, it can be f very easy for Jesus followers or Christ followers to fall into the snare or fall into the trap of adding something to the gospel. Every one of us has probably been guilty of that somewhere along their Christian journey. Today's environment, you could be looking at a certain political party to rescue you. Or because of your affiliation, you'll be earning favor with God, like God cares at all about your political affiliations. You think you earn favor with God by becoming a super Christian who never miss any prayer meeting, or morning, morning devotions. Or, as many progressive Christians today have done by taking a step further where Jesus is no longer a sufficient Savior, all he now is an example of how we can do good works in the world and forgive others. If that was true, that we could attain that highest virtue, if that was the truth, 
and then we could be judged upon that truth. And we could set the level of where we're at as find, finding favor with God. It's heresy. It's sick. What you would call that today is, if you want an equation again, Jesus plus social justice equals false gospel. Equals false gospel. In Philippians chapter 3, verse 18, you don't have to go there, I'll just read it to you. For many walk of whom I have told you often, and now tell you even weeping. I believe he was referring to the Judaizers there. He weeped for his nation. That they are the enemies of the cross of Christ. <clears throat> Too many of you don't take that serious enough. Too many of you have never stopped to even consider what is an enemy of the cross of Christ. Well, I'm going to tell you tonight what an enemy of the cross of Christ is. Someone that preaches Jesus plus anything, as I mentioned earlier, equals salvation. Jesus plus this, Jesus plus that will equal salvation. Jesus plus good works equals salvation. Jesus plus being good equal salvation. That is the enemies of the cross of Christ. Of course Paul is referring to the Judaizers, but it could be anything. And think about it, let me repeat, you're sitting in a church that preaches something that is an enemy that something is a wrong salvation message that is the enemy of the cross of Christ. And you support it. Well, hopefully I can shake your mind with the truth of God's Word. I don't expect you, and you probably shouldn't, shut their mouths. But I hope enough of them eventually will listen to this or read it somewhere and it would shake their brain to true repentance, which is a change of mind, what salvation is all about. So they no longer would be an enemy of the cross of Christ. The enemy of the cross of Christ could mean Judaizers, it could mean the worldly things of this life, it can mean the Lordship salvation gospel that's preached all over the world. Whatever it is, I don't plan to shut up. I plan to shut them up. Because they're leading many astray. And as long as I have breath, whether people like me or not, I'm more concerned of how the Lord looks upon me. Because those people, whose end is destruction, who God is their belly, and whose glory is in their in shame, who mind earthly things. My message is to avoid the circumcision party. Whatever that means in today's world. 
avoid the Jesus plus anything false salvation message. You got it? If you do, I want to hear from you. Play the song.